You are listening to Topics with Tim, The Power of Affirmation, hosted by yours truly, Tim Giorso. Hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to Topics with Tim. I am your host, Tim Giorso. I'm looking forward to uh, doing this solo podcast today. I know I love doing podcasts with people, uh, but I I felt inspired that I wanted to do one by myself today. But I might do this topic again with somebody because I I definitely enjoy podcasting with people. I'm, 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 I'm an extrovert, and so I enjoy when I have someone else to bounce ideas off of and, and talk through things. But for this purpose, we're going to do a solo podcast. You're just going to be hearing my beautiful, lovely voice. And we're going to be talking about a topic that is very, very near and dear to my heart because it's something that has helped me so much through a lot of mental health issues. For those of you that don't know, I was hospitalized for, I think it was three, four days at a mental health facility because I was really struggling with panic attacks uh, pretty constant anxiety. It went on for a couple of years actually before it got bad enough to where I, I felt I needed extra help, and my parents felt I needed extra help, and so then I uh, was checked into a facility. I spent a few months after that doing group therapy as well as continued uh, therapy one on one outside of that. And since then, and that was when I was around 22, is when that first happened. That's when I had my first panic attack. Was uh, age 22. And since then, I have, I have grown so much, and I have learned so much about mental health, about how to think in a healthy way, right? And for a long time, I didn't, and I suffered in 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 ways that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. And I, I after experiencing what I've experienced over these last five years, I'm 27 now. I am. I feel like I'm. I've faced some of the worst uh, things I'll ever face, and I'm excited, kind of knowing that if I was able to get through that, then, man, like, I'm gonna be okay, because it was crazy. And those of you who've experienced your own mental health issues with anxiety and panic attacks and depression, like you're not alone. And I know I I feel for you, and I know, and I'm very empathetic towards people who are struggling with mental health because man I've been there and it was awful and it was the worst thing I've ever experienced and I wished for any sort of physical disease instead because at least I could know what that was and at least other people could like oh Tim you have cancer okay so other people would know but mental health is so funny where you're like I'm having a mental health issue and other people are like oh you'll just get over it you're fine like it's not a real thing and it's hard to really quantify it and and, you know, the doctor tells you you have anxiety is different than the doctor telling you you have cancer, you know. And the, the way people, other people respond to you is so much different. If you say, hey, I have con- cancer, like, oh, my gosh, what can I do to help? You say you have anxiety. It's like, oh, just get over it. Just stop being anxious. It's like, well, that's easy for you to say if you're someone who doesn't have a predisposition to anxiety because there is chemical and scientific components to anxiety. And some people are are born, I think, with with sort of a body that – cannot maybe produce as much serotonin or as much dopamine as someone else or has some genetic predispositions to that or based on how they grew up, maybe never developed those pathways to create those chemicals and so therefore it's just a harder, they have a harder time maintaining that, those levels to be mentally stable because we all need serotonin, we all need dopamine are crucial chemicals in keeping us all stable and mentally stable and there are ways, which I've learned over the last five years, to improve those with the way that you think and the more that you think in an unhealthy way the more you think the way that maybe you think right now the less of those chemicals are going to be produced over time and it's going to be harder to produce those and therefore your mental instability is going to increase so there are things that we can do not just medically or taking medications but actually mental habits we can develop that will help improve our ability to produce serotonin, to produce dopamine, to produce those crucial chemicals, to keep us keep our moods and us feeling better. Because the better we feel, the better we're going to act, the better things we're going to do. No one ever 
typically does good things when they're feeling crappy, right? That's when we're prone to do things that aren't good for us because we just, it, it's that feeling that drives us a lot to act. And of course, you don't want that to always drive you, but that's a whole nother scenario. But anyway, so let's just jump right into the topic. The topic I have for you today is called the power of affirmation. I know we've all heard about affirmations before. An affirmation is is a positive uh, statement or belief that you either say to yourself out loud, which I would recommend, or you say to yourself internally in your thoughts. So an affirmation might be, I am beautiful. Really that simple. And I know that people listening to this go, oh, affirm- what is this? Like, it's so cheesy, you know, but I'm, 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 that's what I'm going to talk about today is affirmations work. They really do. And I would, I would highly recommend anybody to develop a, have a, a set list of affirmations that you say to yourself every single day because it is going to improve your mental health. It's going to improve your anxiety levels. It's going to improve so many things. And affirmations are incredibly, incredibly powerful. I use them every day. It's one of the ways that I maintain my mental health and my mental stability is by using affirmation. And it's, it's worked for me. I know it's worked for other people. Believe me, don't look at this. Even if you're someone who doesn't maybe struggle with mental health, you still have, everyone has issues with holding on to resentment. Everyone has issues with maybe their level of attractiveness and different thoughts that we have. We're, we're, our brains are wired for survival over quality of life. And so your brain will tend to think more negative. And the whole cliche of it takes five positive things to overwrite one negative is absolutely true because we remember the negative all the time. It's rare that we remember the positive, and it's something that you have to train. It's a, it's a muscle that you have to train in your brain to think in this positive way and to focus your mind on things that are positive. Because you'll remember, you always remember the negative. You always remember the thing that you, you messed up on. Uh, when I play sports, I always remember the, the pass that I missed or, or the, sh- the, the, the shot that I missed or the mistake that I made. But how often do I sit and reflect in all the good things I did during the game? the passes I did complete, the, the shots I did make that were good shots. And so that's what I'm talking about today. So first off, the, what kind of really altered my mindset on this issue was this book that I read. And the book is called, and I have it pulled up here on my Kindle, it's called Unlimited Memory. And what stood out about this book was right off the bat, because it's a book about how to improve your memory, and I'm I'm I've never felt like my memory has been that great and I've always wanted to improve my memory because I've seen how important remembering things, remembering things is just for job performance and anything you want to do in life. If you can remember a lot, you're going to be more successful. If you can remember people's names, if you can remember things that they've told you, then people are going to be like, wow, I can't believe so-and-so remembered my name and so-and-so remembered that I told them about my trip to Cabo or whatever. People are going to be astounded by your memory because that's that's – a really cool thing. So in my in in my search for memory, I was reading this book, and one of the things this book mentioned, and said the first thing, if you want to improve your memory, the first thing you have to do is believe that you have a good memory. And I was like, what? What do you mean believe I have a good memory? I can't just I can't just believe I have like well, how does that help my memory? Just to, and I was just like, what are you talking? What? And it hit me because they were bringing up the perspective that, again, because we think in a negative way, we tend to always think, wow, I don't have a good memory. And look at all these. We focus on those things that we've forgotten. I forgot my keys or I forgot this, right? But, But if we really sat and looked at our brain and how powerful and amazing our brains are, think about all the stories that you can remember from your childhood or even from just the last week. Think about the jokes that you can remember. Think about the pictures and and the, like, when someone brings up your favorite movie and you can remember every detail from that movie, our brains are astounding. And if we had the perception, if we saw how incredible our memories are, even if you don't think you have a good memory, you you have a brain and your brain is the most is powerful than any more than any supercomputer that exists in the world. Your brain is more powerful than that, way more powerful than that. We have these synapses that are like unlimited, and it's cr- like even scientists still don't really understand the brain and consciousness and the ability to decide what's right or wrong. It's, it's mind blowing. And if we saw that, if we took the time to reflect in 
all the things that you can remember, you would be like, wow, I have an incredible memory, right? But you have to train your brain to think that way. You have to, you have to believe that you have a good memory, and that's how you start to have a better memory. And that just blew my mind because I went, oh my gosh. So these the things that we believe tend to be very self self uh, a self fulfilling prophecy in a lot of way. What we put out into the world, what we believe about ourselves, tends to be what happens to us. And of course, not everything is in our control, and there are some things about us that we can't change. Like maybe I'm not going to be the most amazing singer in the world. I can still get, be a pretty good singer, but I'm, maybe I'm not going to be, you know, John Legend. But maybe I can. Instead of believing that I'm a terrible singer, if I believe, hey, I'm I'm a pretty good singer, I you know I, maybe I could be a pretty good singer, right? So, what you believe, and there's a really good quote in this book. It says, I'm gonna read it to you right now. It says, your beliefs are only the stories that you have accepted to be true about yourself. Just to, just decide to change the stories. All right, I'm gonna read that one more time. Your beliefs are only the stories that you have accepted to be true about yourself. Just decide to change the stories. Another quote from the book, that beliefs are not tattoos. They are just like clothes. You can put them on and take them off at will. Read that one more time. Beliefs are not tattoos. They are just like clothes. You can put them on and take them off at will. Now this blew my mind because I went, oh my gosh, I can create my own narrative for myself, my own life for myself, and it all really comes down to what I believe to be true on a day-to-day basis. And since that day, I've been kind of re- constantly reworking my affirmations to fit what I want out of life. And of course, I don't, obviously I don't just, I'm a millionaire, because I'm not a millionaire, right? Or I'm like, I can sing like John Legend, right? There, there are unrealistic, you know, beliefs that you can be like, okay, that's, you know, you have to be realistic with your beliefs, of course, but how do we change those beliefs into positive beliefs? And so one of the affirmations that I use on a day-to-day basis is, and I say this every day to myself, two to three times, I say, I have an excellent mind and an excellent memory. And I don't, let me, and I don't always believe it. (laughs) There are many times where I go, I don't really believe that. And it's because I don't feel it in that moment. I don't feel like it's true, right? There's been enough things. Maybe I forgot a couple things that day. And so in that moment, I go, "Ah, I don't really feel like that's true. But the beauty of it is just because you don't feel like it's true doesn't mean it's not. And so even if I don't feel it, and maybe there's things that I'm like, oh, I forgot this, my lunch today, and some, but I just, I say it over myself anyway, because over time, that belief is going to sink in. It's going to gain, it's going to root itself into my mind to where I get to feel it more often. And when I'm feeling it and believing it, my memory is going to only be better because I'm going to be more confident and I'm going to be focused. And because of those positive, that whole positive mindset of I have a good memory and you're reflecting on all the things that you remembered and you're proud of yourself and patting yourself. Wow, I can't believe I remember that girl's name. That's so awesome and I have such a good memory, right? That's going to increase those levels of dopamine, those, those levels of serotonin because those are such positive things to think about and that's going to help you be happier and more mentally stable and that's just one example that's just one area of belief that i've been working on and i kind of want to show you kind of a more in-depth way of why this works right and I, this is my this is kind of a theory that I've developed over time. I've really thought a lot about this, and I believe that we all, as we've as we've grown up, we've all had experiences, right? We've all had experiences where people have maybe told us things that aren't true about us. Maybe we've experienced something where we've been hurt by someone, and so therefore we've developed a belief about what happened. Now the experience, whatever that is, leads to you having a belief and maybe even a core belief, that belief then leads you to how you think. How you think will be based on what you believe. What you are thinking about on a day-to-day basis will determine how you feel on a day-to-day basis, and how you feel on a day-to-day basis will determine 
how you act on a day-to-day basis. So, so really, when you see people do actions, take actions that you're like, why are they doing that? It really isn't the action itself. It's what led them to the action. It's the experience maybe they had in the past, the belief they've developed, the thoughts they were having about that belief, the way they were feeling about those thoughts, that typically leads us to action. So if you are someone who really wants to change and really wants to stop, you know, to break bad habits and to get out of things, you can't just, okay, I'm just going to stop doing this, right? It's, it's, it's so much deeper than that. You have to, okay, well, was there an experience I had where I had a belief and then thoughts and then feelings like you have to kind of jump back like okay let's say you did something today that you're not proud of right you you maybe you're someone who you overate or you, you binged on sugar i i have that issue big time right yeah. so the first step is to go okay well how was i feeling today okay maybe i was feeling down maybe i was feeling upset about something maybe i was feeling worried or anxious okay well if I was feeling that way, I must have been thinking about something that was worrisome. I must have been thinking about something that was hurtful. What was I thinking about? Oh man, I was thinking about like how much I didn't like work today or how stressed out I got about work today. Wow, okay. Okay, well now what am I believing about that situation at work that's causing me to think that way? And then you go, oh my gosh, I'm totally believing that like I hate my job or I'm believing that I'm like... I'm not good at my job. Oh my gosh. And then it's like, okay, well, what experience like led you to believe that? What what maybe caused that that belief about your work? Follow the trail. Right? If you do something that you're not proud of, you're like, why did I freaking do that? And you feel guilty about it, you feel remorseful. How did you feel? How did you feel that day? Go over it. Journal about it. How did you feel? Gosh, I felt maybe I felt sad or maybe you felt depressed or Okay, well, man, what were you thinking about? What were some of your thoughts that you had? Oh my gosh, I was really thinking about this person that I'm angry at and like have a lot of resentment towards. Okay, we'll take that one step further. What do you believe about that situation? Do you believe that they hurt you? Do you believe that maybe you have control over something that you don't? That's been a huge one for me recently is realizing, oh my gosh, the reason I'm I'm thinking about all these people that I'm resentful about and feeling angry at them and then acting out because of that or because of this belief that I have control over them. And then I realize, wow, what what experience sort of created that belief and maybe someone taught me, oh, you can control whatever, maybe you oh I'm not actually I'm not even sure myself exactly where this maybe this experience happened where I got this belief that I somehow have control over these people. But through kind of following this trail back, I've been able to go, oh my gosh, I don't have control over these people. I need to stop. I need to let that go. I need to take on the belief that, like, again, my beliefs are not tattoos. They are like clothes. So I take off that, the clothing of that belief that I can control people, take that off, put on this new belief of, man, God's in control. I'm not in control of these people. I'm going to let go of this anger and this hurt I have towards them and let go of constantly thinking about how to control them and and let that go. And then I feel better and then my actions reflect that. So that's just one example, but you can use this all the time. And so one I want to kind of go through a very specific example of how you can use this. So let's say and some some sometimes it's not always this simple. Sometimes it's the beliefs are more complicated, but I'm going to go really simple here. So you guys kind of understand how to use this process and how to use affirmation. So let's say that you had an experience as a child where you had a friend at school, maybe it was your best friend, maybe you had a parent that told you that you were ugly. They said, you're oh, you're so ugly. All right, you had this experience. From that moment, maybe you were a kid, right? So you didn't know any better. You you trust these adults or these these friends that you have. You don't maybe have, you know, kids don't have the the frontal lobe developed yet where they can go you know, I don't think that's true, right? They're going to believe what they believe. Their, their brains aren't developed in that way yet, so they're very trusting of what is being told to them, which is why it's so important that your kid knows early on that they're beautiful and amazing and, and all that stuff. So now you have this experience. You are ugly. This has now become a belief inside of you that you believe that you are an ugly person. 
Okay. Now what's going to happen as you get older is when situations arise, you're going to be thinking about that you're not attractive. You're going to look in the mirror and go, oh man, I'm so ugly. Gosh, look at that. And you're going to start focusing on all the negative aspects. Oh man, I have this pimple here. Oh, I have this weird droopy eye. Gosh, it's so ugly. All right. Now those thoughts are going to now lead you to, you're going to feel bad. You're going to be like, oh man, I feel ugly. Like who has ever felt good thinking about how ugly they are? Right? That typically means you feel bad. And guess what? Those feelings are going to make you do. Those feelings are going to lead you to act on those feelings. Right? So let's say you're at a bar or wherever and you see a pretty girl. Right? Well, based on your experience, your belief, your thoughts, and then how you're currently feeling, wow, I'm really ugly, that's going to now determine whether or not you go talk to that girl. Because... It, it starts there. It starts from that experience. And now now it's the the, the fruit or, or bad fruit, if you will, is now there where you don't, you don't make the decision to go talk to that pretty girl because well, you believe that you're ugly and all the, all the things associated with that. All right? Now let's say as a child, let's, let's backtrack your child and your parents are really good about affirming you and saying, you are beautiful in our eyes. You are beautiful in God's eyes. You are beautiful. So then you develop this belief that I, I am beautiful in my own way, All right? So now when you look in the mirror every morning, you go, man, my hair looks good. Man, my eyes are looking really good. Like, my eyes are looking really pretty today. They look so bright. Like, oh, man, I love, like, my freckles here. I love, like, oh, my beard looks looking good, All right? And you're going to feel good. You're going to feel really good. You're going to feel confident. You're going to feel excited. And now you're in that situation at the bar, and there's that pretty girl, and you're going to go, I'm going to go talk to that girl because I know that I'm beautiful and I feel good right now about this action. And that's a very that's a, that's a very specific example. Like I said, sometimes the beliefs are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more layered. But that's just one thing where that's where affirmations come into play because essentially when you choose to affirm yourself, you are, you are making an experience. You're creating ex an experience in that moment that is going to change that belief, is going to change that, clo that, that clothing that you put on, that I'm ugly. If you look in the mirror every day I, and say, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, and stare at yourself and mean it when you say it, over time, that belief is going to be ingrained in you. And you're not even going to have to think about it. It's just going to become something that is natural and something that your thoughts just flow from that belief because it's so ingrained. And the, the key part of affirmation is there's going to be times where if you're saying an affirmation over yourself, you're not going to believe it. There are many times where I will say these different affirmations over myself and I'm not feeling it at all. But you know what's beautiful about that? It teaches you that, wow, my feelings, I cannot base what I believe in my feelings. Because as humans, our, feel, our feelings fluctuate on a day, to, you know, one minute you're sad, then maybe you're happy, then something happens, maybe you're disappointed, then something better happens, you're happy again, then you're sad, then you're disappointed, right? Like, we're constantly going through these fluctuations of emotion, and it's so crucial that you do not base what you believe off of what you feel because in your belief system will be exactly like your emotions they will fluctuate up and down up and down and that my friends is a very hard way to live and you will be very very unhappy because to know that your let's say this example your belief in whether or not you're attractive fluctuates constantly gosh that's that's going to be really it's not that's going to be hard on you mentally and that's going to be hard on your serotonin and your dopamine levels because time and time shows again that the more positive mindset you have, the more positive, healthy beliefs you have about yourself, those levels of dopamine and serotonin are going to increase over time. So do not base your, your beliefs off of your feelings. And even if you're saying these affirmations, especially when you start out, when I started out saying some of these affirmations, it took me weeks sometimes for the, the belief to finally take root, right? It's like when you plant a little plant in the ground, Right, its roots are really short, and so it's easy. You can just yank it right up, 
if you wanted to. Over time, those roots grow deeper and they grow deeper into the soil and deeper to the point where you've tried to pull those weeds where you're like, gosh, freaking dang it, I can't get to this bottom of this weed. And you have to like, it's so deeply rooted in the ground. And and that's what that's what's available to you guys is healthy, strong beliefs that are rooted into the ground. Now, certain affirmations definitely resonate with different people based on how they're upbringing. And I kind of want to share with you a little bit of mine. So I grew up with a, a struggle of a performance equals love mentality. And that's something that I developed. I could, I could go into that, but I'm not going to. But I now realize that I've now, oh my gosh, I from for so long, I believed that my performance equaled being able to receive love from family, from friends. And that is a tough place to be because you can never really earn. If you're in that mentality all the time, then life is scary because if you don't perform, then you don't get loved. That's very, very scary. So one of my favorite affirmations that I use on a day-to-day basis is I don't have to be perfect to be loved because I've developed over time, I've developed this perfectionism mentality where Everything has to be perfect, and I have to be perfect, or else I don't get I don't get to receive love. And so that's that that sp- specific affirmation resonates super well with me, because I go, oh my gosh, I just like it's like this backpack being, oh, I don't have to be perfect to be loved. Oh, thank God, <laughs> thank God. Oh my gosh, because I'm so always trying to like, okay, how do I earn or or you know, and it affects me all the time. It's something that still affects me to where. I'm sometimes it's hard for me to be be around friends because I'm sort of feeling like okay if I don't perform if I'm not funny if I'm not entertaining enough then they're gonna leave they're gonna be like oh, this is boring and I'm out of here right I, to get their love to get their respect I've got to earn that right so that's something that I have to remind myself on a daily basis Tim you know I don't have to be perfect to be loved and that's powerful for me because I have for what I've had experiences growing up where I've sort of misread situations. And sort of believe that, oh, well, I'm not making enough money, so therefore, you know, I'm not being loved. I'm not lovable or these different things, right? These experiences led to a belief that performance equals love. That belief led to me thinking all the time about how do, how do I earn people's love and how do I keep friends from, from leaving me because I'm not fun enough. And then I feel anxious. I feel worried. I feel uneasy. And then my actions reflect that. And so that's a huge one for me. Another one is a big one of mine is, again, due to my perfectionism, wanting to be perfect and wanting to perform, I always, I overanalyze, overanalyze all my decisions to where it's like they're life and death sometimes. Like just what shirt I'm going to wear. My mind's like, okay, well, if I wear this shirt, then like, then this person might respond to me this way or, or maybe, oh, but then people might think that like this, because, and I'm like, oh, Tim, it's a shirt. It's a freaking shirt. Just pick a shirt. <laughs> like, like 99% of people aren't even going to notice your shirt. And here you are overanalyzing, trying to be perfect, trying to make sure that you have the right shirt, that everything works out perfectly, and that therefore you can receive love from people. So I have to remind myself of this affirmation that's I know what I want and I'm confident of the decisions I make. And let me tell you, there are so many times where I don't believe that. And I just have to, I have to say, Tim, just... Just fake it till you make it because you know this is true. Even though you don't feel this is true, you know this is true. And deep down, you do know what you want. and You are confident of the decisions you make, but you just have to keep saying it. And over time, as I've continued to say that over myself every day, sometimes multiple times per day, sometimes 10 to 20 times per day, I, I'm believing it more. I'm just like, okay, I know what I want and I'm confident. I'm just going to grab that shirt. That sh- I want to wear this shirt. Boom. Right? takes me five seconds to pick a shirt now, where it used to take me five minutes to, to pick a shirt, right? And that's, again, just building that belief inside of me with that affirmation daily has been huge. Um, another one that's really big is is I am brave and I am courageous. That's something I say over myself every day. 
And I've seen there's been situations where I've kind of stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit more because I've believed that. I've even me doing this podcast right now is kind of evidence of again, I'm 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 being brave and courageous that like people actually might want to listen to what I have to say. And that's hard for me because part of me is like, what no one wants to hear what you have to say. Like, who do you think you are? You know, but again, just I am brave, I am courageous, I'm I'm being brave right now by just putting myself out there and putting my thoughts and beliefs out there to people and seeing if they're interested in listening. So that's been a huge one for me. Another one for me, again, because of that performance mentality where I'm always trying to earn people's love, I, uh, one of the affirmations I use is, uh, the more people get to know me, the more they like me. And that's a bit, that's like a huge relief for me because I'm sort of afraid that as you get to know me, you'll be like, you'll be like, peace. And again, that's kind of based off of experiences I've had where I've, I've had some friends, and I'm sure we all have this experience. I've had some friends that have essentially excommunicated me out of their life. And that that experience created that belief that, oh man, well, I'm, I must not be fun enough. I must not be lovable. I must not be someone who's fun to be around because these people... There's evidence that these people left. They, ex- they they decided not to be a part of my life anymore. And that, again, created this inner negative belief that I'm not lovable. And, and so that's uh, to combat that, I've had to, you know, Tim, the more people that get to know you, the more they like you. And I found that to be a true a lot, where I'm more confident in getting to know people and letting letting other people in because I I believe that the more they get to know me, the more they will like me. And I've, I have some great friendships now and some some awesome, awesome relationships with people because of that belief. So those are just a few of mine. And I would highly recommend all of you who are listening to this podcast right now, pick five. Pick five affirmations, things things that you wish people would tell you. That's what I would start, start with, things that you wish people would say to you. Right, like when I think about, gosh, what do I, what do I, because you know some people do affirm you, and that's that's really good. And some people, um, but there's a lot of things that are unsaid that you wish were said about you, right? Like you wish someone said, like one of mine was, I always wish that someone would just tell me that, like Tim, you know, you, like you're a good man, like you're just you are a good man, and I don't like hear that a lot from people, but I want to hear that, and so when I think about, okay, that's something I really want to hear about myself. And again, you can obviously take this really wrong, right? You could, you could like, you could, you could really use this in a negative way, right? You could try to think of a, just cause you want to hear that you are like going to be the richest man in the world, right? That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to become true, you know? So obviously you can kind of take this in a bad way, but Think of it more as like truly those inner things that like you wish people said about you. You wish people, maybe you honestly wish that someone told you that you were beautiful. Maybe you do struggle with that belief of, of being ugly, right? And you, gosh, if only like, and, and you, maybe when people do tell you that you're beautiful, it like hits you. You're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like it makes you feel so good, All right? Think about those things. And like a couple of mine were like, you know, I'm good enough because again, the performance thing. I'm not good enough, right? I gotta earn your love. I'm not good enough, blah, blah, blah. So whenever someone says, hey, you're good enough, I'm like, oh, thank you. Like, I wanna cry, because I'm like, gosh, that's just all I wanted to hear was someone just tell me that you're you're good enough. Like, even as I say that right now, I'm like, my eyes are starting to water a little bit, because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm good enough. Like, that's, man, that's, that's it. That's all that I wanted to know, was that I'm good enough. <clears throat> and that comes from that whole performance experience, belief, thoughts, feelings, action. It's something I'm slowly sort of rooting out of my system and I'm slowly putting in these these beliefs that I am good enough and and building those and really getting those deeply rooted to where I don't have to spend a lot of time um, training that. Right? It's like anything. You train a muscle, you build the muscle, your muscle becomes strong, you can do more stuff. It's the same way. You're, you're building this mental muscle you're building these these beliefs are like little muscles that you're just you're just building in and you're training every day to where you know doing 20 pounds now if I'm bicep curling 20 pounds that's nothing for me you know so i would say definitely pick five things so i could, you know if you can't think of anything i'm beautiful 
Like we are all beautiful in our own way. I know that sounds cheesy as hell, and I get the might not believe it, but honestly, it's what's true. It's what's true. Everyone has beauty, whether they think they do or not. So that would be the one I started with. I am beautiful. Look in the mirror every day. You don't have to look in the mirror. Sometimes I'll just be sitting at home. I close my eyes and I just repeat over myself. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Hopefully more than once would help. Just because again, that five to one ratio of positive to negative. Uh, another one would be like, I mean, I, for those of you who aren't religious, not biblical, I don't know, but like, I always like to say that you know I'm in I'm in I'm in um I'm in the hands of God, right? Like I'm in the hands of God. Like He, I don't have to worry about anything because He's there. He's gonna take care of me, right? God's gonna take care of me. That's what I use. Or you could also use um you know I use that one. I am good enough. Like everyone is good enough. Everyone is been made and created to be more than good enough, really. But start with that. I am good enough. Another one. I don't have to be perfect to be loved. And that's true of everyone. No one no one is perfect. In fact, it's what's imperfect about you, which what, what makes you perfect is what makes you fun. If we were all perfect, then God, we'd all be so boring. You know, it's, it's those things about us that aren't perfect. That's what gives us like our uniqueness and all the, our stories and our different things. So remind yourself of that. I don't have to be perfect to be loved. So there's just a couple. I said write them down. I would ex- I, I would experiment with different ones and and see how they make you feel. Right? Think about one. Gosh, I'd really love to hear someone tell me that um, I mean a lot to them or I'm needed. You know, and see how that feels. Be like, wow, that, gosh, that really hits me. That one. Start using that one every day. Right? I what I do is I'll I'll make a list and then tape them on my mirror. So that way every day you go into the bathroom, you're brushing your teeth, you're doing whatever, you just take a peek at that list. You just read through it and go, oh yeah, those are truths about me. right? Those are truths that remain true regardless of how I feel that day. I might feel really, really freaking ugly that day. But you know what? That, 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 that chart on my, on my mirror says that I'm beautiful. And so I'm going to choose to hold on to that belief. I'm going to choose to let go of this feeling of feeling ugly. I'm going to choose to believe I'm beautiful. And this is something you can see every day and something you can, you know, I would highly recommend saying it out loud. I would say saying it out loud works better, but you can still say it in your mind and that still works great. But it, to, to, to be able to hear yourself say it out loud, it adds another layer to like your brain hearing it. Because when you say things out loud, it's it's so powerful. I had this this unreal moment one time where I was I was going for a run and, it was a particularly hard time. It was kind of during that dark time in my life um, where I had panic attacks and anxiety pretty pretty much every day. And I remember just getting in the water. There was a little lake nearby, and I was praying, and I just started to speak truth over myself. I started to speak you know, biblical truths over myself that you know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that I'm made perfect in the image of God, that, um, that he, he created me for a purpose, that I have a purpose, and just saying these things over myself, and I just, wow, like it just, I felt so good, I felt the best I'd felt in so long, so I would highly recommend saying things over yourself out loud, but like I said, if you're in a situation where you can't really do that, then definitely like just in your mind, you could even picture the words, like being written out, that's something I do a lot when I'm uh, doing meditation, is I'll picture like, I'll, I'll picture those words being written out on like a like a black canvas, and like white writing, Right, just in my mind, um, and, or or something like that, and or all just in my mind. As we all talk to ourselves on a daily basis, right? Your your best friend is yourself because that's who you're talking to constantly. Just be, hey, you know what? I'm I know what I want. I'm confident in the decisions I make, or I'm beautiful, or I don't deserve to be loved. And yeah, and that's like I said. It may sound cheesy. It may sound too good to be true. It may sound too simple. It may sound too like religious, but I'm telling you, the science is there, the data is there. If you want to improve your mood, if you want to improve your sense of well-being, if you want to improve those dopamine and those serotonin levels, which we all need to to function properly, 
it would be just in the way that people always tell you that you need to exercise, right? Because you get the endorphins from working out as well as all the other benefits, which I could go into an hour long thing on just the benefits of exercise. It's the same thing, right? Affirmations are something that you can do to take care of your mental health on a day to day basis. And over, you will see if you start to do affirmations daily, you will see you will see big improvements and you will see your life change in profound ways because you realize how much control you have over what's going on in your mind. You may not have control over your circumstances. You may not have control over the gifts that you've been given. You don't you definitely don't have control over other people. That's for dang sure. But what you do have control over is your mind, what you believe about yourself, what you think about. And there's a lot of wisdom in uh, especially the Bible talks a lot about what you think about will run your life. Another one of my favorite verses is um Think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy and good and wholesome. And those things are going to improve improve your life. And the more you're thinking in a negative way, the more you're focused on all the things you did wrong today, the more you're focused on how ugly you are, these negative, untrue beliefs. The harder your life will be, the more sad and, and, and the worse you'll feel, the worse probably your actions will, will be. Because no, no humans act well when they're feeling crappy. It's rare that we that we we need we need a positive emotional base to make good decisions, which is why they always say like never make a decision when you're in like a bad place. Like don't make any decisions. Wait till you're in a positive state of mind, then make decisions because you're going to think more clearly. Your dopamine and serotonin levels are going to be elevated. You're going to be able to see reality more clearly about these situations you're in in life, and you're going to make a better decision ultimately. So again. What we went over, we went over that memory book and how the first step to being better at anything is to analyze what you believe about that. Uh, Beliefs are like clothes that you can take on and off. You get to decide what you believe, right? Remember that. No one determines your beliefs. You do. So experiment. Put on a new clothing today. Put on the belief that I am beautiful today. Wear that clothing. See how it feels. See if you like it. See if it... If you feel like, wow, this is true, All right? And again, remember, your experiences lead to your beliefs. Your beliefs lead to your thoughts. Your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your, your actions. So if you're ever struggling with an action, a bad habit that you seem to cannot break, backtrack, right? Journal. How did you feel that day? Right, because that's going to reveal as you talk about. Oh, I felt this. Oh my gosh, that's going to reveal what you were thinking about that day. What you were thinking about and how you were thinking about it is going to give you insight into. Oh my gosh, that's what I believe about this person. That's what I believe about myself. That's what I believe about the situation. And then that is going to then maybe hopefully lead you back to that maybe that experience that you had, or it honestly is a lot of times it's probably a bunch of experiences all put together. Right, and even even things that you, as you already had this negative belief ingrained, as you experienced more things, and then you perceived them through that lens of that belief. You probably even have even more experiences now where your mind's like, "Oh well, see this happens. So that must mean I'm ugly because this person didn't want to hang out. You know, this girl said no, even though maybe the girl was like totally like nervous herself and thought you were way too attractive for her." But you re- you read that situation, you perceive that situation, based on the lens of your belief. All right, that's another big thing, right? Your beliefs are your lens to the world. It's what you experience the world through. So if the reality of the situation is that girl that you wanted to go talk to, actually thought that she was not attractive enough for you because you were so cute, and she thought you were so cute, or so handsome, or whatnot. But you perceived, you read that situation through your experience, your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings, and you perceive that, oh, well, she doesn't like me. That's why she didn't want to go out with me, or that's why she didn't talk to me, right? But that may not, but what if that's not true? What if the truth is that she, you know, is that? Or what if the truth was that she just, she thought you were cute, but maybe she already had a boyfriend, you know? So you might have even created more experiences that have only reaffirmed a negative belief that you now need to look at through a different lens. 
So if you take that, that, that lens of I'm beautiful and you look back on all these experiences you've had and look at, look at them through that lens. Well, if I'm, attra- if I'm beautiful and this situation where this girl maybe didn't want to go out with me, well, gosh, now that I have this new lens that I'm looking through, maybe I can see something different. Maybe I can see that, oh, she had a boyfriend. Well, that makes sense. Of course she's not going to go out with me if she has a boyfriend. Or, oh, man, like maybe you find out that she was actually like kind of insecure and maybe thought you were really cute and didn't think that she deserved you or or something like that, right? You This new lens will now give you a new perspective on these experiences that you've had and will give you a new perspective on your future experiences where you'll be able to see reality more clearly and be able to go, wow. Anyway, that has been your topic for Tim, the power of affirmation. If you want to ask me any more questions about it, well, and you know me, well, text me or call me. And if not, leave a comment below on the video. And I hope all of you, again, I strongly urge you to pick five affirmations, things that you would like to be told about yourself that would make you feel really good. And again, obviously, I would recommend um, start maybe starting with, as well, starting with biblical truths because obviously you could, again, you could, you could tell yourself every day that you're going to be a billionaire, and that may not happen, right? <laughs> so uh, don't go too far with it, right? You, you still need your beliefs to be based in something that's true. That's why I choose to base my beliefs on biblical principles because I've, I've studied and researched enough to believe that the Bible is a very accurate book. And so I trust that if the Bible says that I am beautiful, then that's what's true about me. Um, and... That's where I get a lot of my affirmations are based off of biblical principles because, I, again, I feel like it's a trustworthy book. It's a trustworthy belief system to put in to to allow those what the Bible says about me to for me to believe that about me as well because I think it's that's healthy. So anyway, I'm, but I, even if you don't, you're not a Christian or not a, a religious person or uh, a Bible reading of that, there's still plenty of truthful, accurate beliefs that – you can think about and that you can find rest in that you can use to grow in your little garden in your mind start growing all these different beautiful plants in your mind and have them firmly and deeply rooted in your mind anyway this has been topics for tim i hope you guys have an awesome day you are beautiful you are perfect in your own way you are lovable you are worthy you are awesome thank you for listening i'll talk to you soon Thank you for listening to Topics with Tim, The Power of Affirmation. If you liked what you listened to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that way you can get updated when I post new videos and new podcasts as I have a couple other podcasts that I do as well. And if you're interested in being on a podcast, please let me know. I'm looking into starting a new podcast series where I take a new person each week through a story of their life. So if that interests you, uh, comment below or text or call me, Tim, um, if you know me and see me on a regular basis. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.